in, in Mark 7, 20 and 23, in the passing, pass, uh, Passion Version, it says, what comes out of a man is what defiles a man. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adultery, fornication, deceit, an evil eye, etc., etc. See, it's what you're focused on. It's what you're meditating on. It's not that you're weak. If you're looking at a lot of trashy movies, guess what? That's gonna, that's, there's an impartation of that spirit to you. So if you're saying, well, I don't want to behave that way, well, you know, ask Holy Spirit. He's a wonderful teacher. Ask him. A lot to me, a lot of it's common sense. Don't watch trashy, trashy movies. I mean, you, you know, we have to watch. If you're having a lust issue, don't watch movies with sex in it, right? Even if you're not having, you're not having lust issue. Thank you, Peter. Don't watch movies <laughs> with lust in it. <laughs> not good. Flee fornication, the Bible says. See, see, the Bible is very clear about the right and wrong, right? The Bible is very clear about not having sex outside of marriage. I didn't write the book. He wrote it in here for a reason, and he wrote it so that we can live an honorable life and be in covenant because he doesn't want us getting hurt. How many people are so wounded and hurt because of their lifestyle? It's, it, it, again, it always goes back to the heart, and the Lord wants everybody to have a blessed life. It's not, oh, you're judging me. No, I'm not judging me. I mean, the fact's a fact. I mean, we're, we're just here, if you're asking me about something, I'm going to teach you what the word of the Lord says. See, we have to be Bereans. We have to get back to what the Bible says. People have to read their Bibles. And that's the other thing that I have found. Many people don't read the word. How do you know what's in your, your, your you know, the, the plan? What's our inheritance here? And the Bible, the Bible says in John chapter 8 that it's the truth of the word that sets us free. Amen. Why there's not a lot of freedom, honestly, I, I really believe a lot of people are not in the word. When I got saved, I was as messed up as could be. And I didn't even attend a church because I didn't know where born again went to church. And I've shared this many times. But I, I, I knew enough. I mean, people gave me a Bible and I read little booklets to help me read the Bible. And I, I devoured the word, and my life started to radically shift. The word is that powerful. Now, uh, uh, granted, we have counselors now. We have can we do here deliverance? But if you're not doing your due diligence, you're going to go around the mountain, around the mountain, around the mountain forever. Jesus said, "I come to set you free." Amen. So that's what we want. In Psalm 119, 131, it says, I opened my mouth and panted, for I longed for your commandments. See, God is, I'm praying that God releases that longing for his word. That, oh man, I can't, I'm just so parched. You know, in Psalm 63, it says, I've longed for you, oh God, in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. You know, I'm parched. My soul panthes. You know, in Psalm 42, like a deer. You know, I'm panting for you, oh God. See, that's what happens when you get in the Word. That the, you don't just start hungering for the Lord. You start reading the Word and, and, and giving that, that, putting that, that time aside. Listen, people want to get in shape. People are like, oh, we're going to do yoga. Let me tell you something. <laughs> you know, what you have to do is get in the Word. You want to get your body in shape. You want to get your spirit man in shape. We put our emphasis on all these other things. We'll spend, you know, now we're doing all these things, and not everything is of the Lord, just saying. So you have to then get into the word. We put our, our time and our effort in things that aren't, the things that are, I mean, I'm not saying, you know, like to work out. I think work out, work out with weights and all that. I think that's very healthy. It's very good for you. But listen, we, we, we put everything ahead of the Lord. Sometimes, like, you know, that's idolatry. The Bible's, I'm just saying what the Word says. When you put things before the Lord, it's not right. You can, you can get before the Lord 30 minutes and he can solve your whole day's issue, give you strategy, revelation for your whole day. You see? And so the Lord's saying, listen, I'm not telling you these things because I want to be a pain. I'm sharing these things because I love you and I want you to understand there's liberty, there's freedom. I'm not, I don't feel like I have religious restraint on me. I've never been this free. You know, like, listen, if you're getting high, if you're partying, there, there's that need. You have to constantly get that thing to get high or, you know, whatever it is, that, that substance that, to make you feel better. Well, the Bible's free. Yeah. 
And so it really is the most satisfying thing because what happens is you have to keep buying, you have to keep doing, you have to keep going. Here it's like Lord is saying, listen, I'll be your umpire. I'm the umpire of peace in your life. The peace of God will rule over you and, and you'll crush Satan's head under your feet. That word peace literally means to be an umpire. He calls the shots when you submit to him. He is the most high. There's no high like the most high, right? So, um, so anyway, so the Lord is saying to us, ask and you shall receive him. My husband was saying that, something like that before. You know, we have to open our mouths to God in prayer. We have to allow the Holy Spirit to speak through us. We don't want to speak offensive words. We don't want to be negative. Listen, right now, you have to, well, you don't have to if you want to, just, just de declare that I am not going to be negative. I am not going to live a negative lifestyle. I am not going to just always see everything negative, 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 and never looking at the good. Well, start looking at the good. I promise you, after 21 days, if you really take this challenge, your spiritual life will soar. It will shift. Honest to God. And I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, I, I got a little sloppy, you know, with uh, certain things and, and just like my thoughts and you know, like when we're driving with Peter and different things like that, that I thought of people and, you know, and I said, I wasn't really even verbalizing except to him when he was driving. But I, I said, Lord, I said, I'm so sorry. And he was bringing up different situations. That in itself, it didn't seem bad because you can say, oh, you're being too hard on yourself. No, Holy Spirit showed me. So I have to listen to that. And he said, check your heart. He said, you're being a little too critical here. Watch what you're thinking about this thing. Watch what you're thinking about some of the politicians that you didn't pray for. Watch what you're saying. No, I, I'm nice to you. It's a Peter. Um, you know, so listen to this. In Psalm 103, 1 through 5, it says, Bless affectionately and gratefully praise the Lord, O my soul, and all that is deepest within me. Bless his holy name who satisfies your mouth your necessity and desire at your personal age and situation with good so that your youth, hallelujah, is renewed like eagles, strong, overcoming, and soaring. Doesn't have anything on those injectables. My youth will be renewed and my, my, my spirit here will just be so filled. He says, see, I satisfy your mouth. He said, he said your youth will be renewed. Listen, I promise you, if you're acting all negative, and, and, and just always being very critical, it'll age you. So that's something to really watch. So when, you know, the Lord is also saying not to be sarcasm. And I looked up the word in the Greek, it's S-A-R-K-A-Z-E-I-N, and it means to tear apart flesh like a dog. To tear apart. So a lot of times we'll say it trying to be funny but it really is hurtful and it's tearing something apart. So somebody said that it was called scar chasm. So causes scars. So we have to watch it. So we want, we don't want to have a fool's mouth and you know, we want to be like in Isaiah 49 two where it says he made my mouth like a sharp sword, a sword that goes out that when I'm decreeing the word of the Lord, that it's, it's that sh sword that's cutting away that thing that's hindering us. So we want to have a word fast. We want to be careful. Prayer changes things. We want to do good. We want to love our enemies. We want to get the heart of the Lord. And honestly, it comes through our meditations. And, um, we have to understand that when we meditate, Whatever we meditate, like in Joshua 1 8, it says that if we meditate on the word day and night, therein we will have good success and we will prosper. Well, that word meditate, and there was another portion of scripture I looked it up and I don't remember where it is, but meditate means to imagine. And it means to, you know, of course, to mutter, to regurgitate. So we don't want to regurgitate or mutter and, and just review things that are negative. How many times when we have a situation happen? We just rehearse over and over again, over and over again, what, what hasn't happened or, you know, or the thing about that person said and, and, and it hurts, right? So one of the ways that we do that is we bring it to the Lord and ask him, tell him the truth. I'm hurting. I don't like that individual. Help me to see them through your eyes. And Lord, I choose to forgive him because unforgiveness is the number one thing that holds us all in bondage. When we're, when we're ministering in deliverance, that's the number one reason a person will not get set free is unforgiveness 
right? So we have to check our heart. Do you have unforgiveness towards yourself? Do you have unforgiveness towards anybody else? 